Hey there, thank you, Steve. I appreciate you. Yes. I'm trying to get on Facebook Live. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, hey, here we go. Hanging on Facebook Live too. <laughs> hey Tracy, how are you, darling? Yes. Hey Keisha. Hey Sissy Poo, how are you doing, hon? Let me see if I can get on Facebook Live as well. You know the dilemma with that. Hey, 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 happy Saturday. I'm going to turn this down. How is everyone out there? The Saturday after Thanksgiving. Did everyone have a really good Thanksgiving? I know I did. Had a great time with family. I didn't eat too much. Um, it was not my intent to eat a lot. <laughs> it was my intent to eat just enough to be full uh, for that day. And um, it was great. Every, every, everything was great. So I'm blessed. I'm really blessed to have family. I'm thankful and grateful for my family, for love, for peace, for joy, for wholeness, for sustainability, and all of that great stuff. Hey there, Mrs. Dimbo. Please go ahead and invite your followers, you all. If you've been with me the last few Saturdays, we've just been talking about some areas of focus of how to stop the cycle of broken marriages. And I've been talking about a variety of topics uh, for the last few weeks. On last week, I actually talked about showing your ugly, asking God to show you your ugly. So if you were not on that scope, I did a partial scope and then I went over to Facebook. Sorry, you guys, because I wanted to make sure I captured everyone. And I may do that same today. I may stay on for about 20 to 30 minutes and then go on Facebook. Hey, they Kenyatta, how are you? But we have to um, we have to tackle this area. And I know in the body of Christ, you know, a lot of times we stray away from a lot of areas um, that deals with the family and deals with relationships and things of that nature because we tend to focus on more broader broader issues or more things that may seem a, a bigger perspective. But 
What I do know is that God created the family unit and God intended for the family to operate as the kingdom family. And he intended the husband and wife to operate as he operates toward the church. And what I can tell you is that a lot of brokenness, thank you so much for sharing, Kenyatta, I appreciate it. So much brokenness is occurring in the body of Christ and all around us is because families are dysfunctional. Churches are dysfunctional because families are dysfunctional. Communities are dysfunctional because families are dysfunctional. You get what I'm saying? So in order for us to live in a place of functionality, in order for us to live from a, uh, in a place of betterment and not in a place of brokenness and continue, continue disdainment, but sustainment is that we have to get the family unit back on track. We have to get back to a place of healing and restoration within the family unit. And what I can tell you is that the family unit, unit is unable to be in a restored state if you have an individual that's broken. So we want to talk about that on today. And I, I, I made a post on my Facebook just a while ago. And when I, when I talk about brokenness, and especially when you're talking about brokenness in a marriage, please get this. It doesn't necessarily mean that somebody, um, that the person in your marriage, your husband or wife, has affected you or caused a brokenness. Or there is a, a particular situation or circumstance that caused your level of brokenness or that's causing the brokenness in the marriage. It can very well be something, a condition, a pre-existing condition that you're dealing with. So how many of you know about the medical field in any arena? You know that the Obamacare administration, they passed the Obama Obamacare law, right? So that everybody, so many people can have health insurance. And one of the benefits of it, I'm not um, endorsing it, but I'm just telling you one of the benefits of that of that, of that that health uh, insurance is that people that have pre-existing conditions are able to get insurance and they're not being denied. If you know anything about healthcare industry, I used to work in the healthcare industry more on the administrative side. If you had a pre-existing condition, they will not honor or give you any level of health insurance. And that's the same too with life insurance. A lot of times you have to take a test or um, you know, declare your soundness and your health in order to get some level of, of life insurance. Because if you have any level of pre-existing condition, that will deny you. And what I'm, what I'm seeing in the body, in Christ, body of Christ, and especially in marriages and relationships, a lot of people have pre-existing conditions. So it's causing them to be denied and it's causing certain levels of discomfort and certain illnesses and sicknesses within the marriage as a whole. So we want to talk about that on today. And you know what? I was supposed to talk about a whole entirely different subject, but God gave me this. Um, he was just weighing on my heart just recently about brokenness. Well, I guess for a while now, because I talked about the ugly and then he just had brokenness, brokenness. And he just had me to think about the level of brokenness that individuals are still dealing with and why relationships or marriage and marriages are being torn apart because people are broken. We have to deal with the brokenness. So, hey, for those that know, don't know who I am for first timers, uh, for those that may know who I am, I'm just going to reintroduce myself. My name is Cheryl Ravidale. I'm one of the founders of Detour Movement, where we teach and where we help women to renew their minds so that they can transform their life. And when I talk about transformation, I'm not, I'm not just talking about a specific areas of their life, but every area of their life. And in this instance, uh, transforming your marriage, transforming your mind, transforming your money, transforming your ministry, transforming your mission, whatever it is that you need God to transform, that's what we teach and that's what we, and that's what we, we help women to do. We believe that it is a necessity. Why? Because the word of God tells us that we are not to conform to the patterns and the ideologies of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So in order for our lives to be transformed, we have to first renew our minds. So that's where we are. That's what we do. And we focus and our specialty is relationships, be it the single individual relationship and also marital relationships. So I'm coming to you today on that note. So in my devotion time this morning, hey, Miss Gigi, how are you? In my devotion time this morning, God just had me to unpack some things as it relates to the brokenness. And I want this to be a conversation on today. So I don't want to do all the talking. Uh, I know that uh, you, you guys can only type and tap on the hearts, but I want you to definitely um, get in on this conversation today because I want to hear from you. So let me just do some, set some ground rules right quick so you can make sure that you're in the right room. And if you know of someone that needs to be in this room on this afternoon, please share it with them. 
please do not withhold a word from anybody. Look here. God has placed us all in a particular season and in a particular space in our lives to bless other people. But whatever means that is, everybody has a different platform. Everybody has a different way of blessing. Everybody has different gifts and different talents. But he's given us all gifts and he's given us all talents and he's given us all some level or some type of ministry. So in me, uh, on the scope today and in operating in my level of ministry, I'm asking you all to share with somebody that you know that's in a broken state, that you know that's in a place of discouragement, you know that's in a place where they're distraught, um, where they may be going even through depression, oppression because of something that may have happened in their lives. And because of that, it is now affecting their relationships. And in particular, this is a wife chat. It's affecting their marriage. You've seen them go from a place of loneliness to a place of lowliness to a place of Lodabar, which we're talking about a dry place when they're in Lodabar. Lodabar. We don't want them to be in a dry and an empty and an obsolete place. So we want to bring them out from that place because of the brokenness that has happened. So let's do a roll call. So let's see. You belong here. You belong here if you need or desire growth in your marriage. I don't know about you, but we all can use let growth in, in, in our marriage. Like your marriage will never be to a place where it has arrived. It will never be to a place where it is perfect. It will never be to a place where you don't have to work on it. It's a continuous work. The same way you continue to work on yourself. You continue to improve your well-being. Um, if For those of you that are on a job, you continue to take courses and do things within the job to better yourself and to be a better employee. For those of you that are business owners, for you to continue to, um, you know, take courses and, and receive coaching and mentoring to be a better business person that's the same thing with your marriage we have to treat it in the same way okay so you need to be here if you desire growth you need to be here if you have severed relationships and you know you need those relationships to be restored, you have relationships that have been broken because of you, because of your um, brokenness, because of your pre-existing condition. And you need to be here if you are broken due to whatever circumstance or situation that you have endured in your life. And again, it's not necessarily something that has happened in your marriage. This could be pre-marriage because we're talking about pre-existing pre-existing conditions. You don't need to be here if you have it all together. So if you feel like that you're perfect, your life is perfect, your marriage is perfect, you don't need to be here. I don't want you to waste my time. I don't want you to waste your own time and sitting on the scope on this afternoon, okay? You don't need to be here if you are, if you feel like your marriage has no room for growth, no room um, to stretch any further. You don't need to go deeper. You don't need to get better. And what I often say is that your marriage will only be as good as you. So the better you become, the better your marriage will become. And then the last thing is you don't need to be here if you don't desire any growth, any change, any expansion of your life. And but what I can say is that look here, you know, we as, as believers, especially in the body of Christ, we should always be striving for a deeper level. We should always be striving to go to the next dimension in God because there are dimensions that we go through and there are dimension, dimensions that we pass through in order to get to that place of success, whatever that may look like for you. So I just wanted to lay that foundation really quick and lay that with the ground rules more so uh, really quick. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And what I want to do first of all is define brokenness, define brokenness. And then when I was looking for the definition, you know, it kept taking me back to the root word broke or broken, right? Um, because brokenness, right, derived from being broke or break or broken. So it kept taking me back to that. And what it was telling me is that uh, to be broken, right, in a broken state means that you've been reduced to fragments, fragmentation, or you've been fragmented means you've been scattered, you've been uh, taken apart, right? You've been severed, you've been ruptured, you've been torn, uh, uh, you've been fractured. Uh, brokenness describes a person who is extremely discouraged and unhappy. Often the person feels crushed and they feel like life is bitter. So if that is you, or if you know somebody, please take this time. I, I know some of you have already invited your followers, but please take this time out to invite some folks on if you know that they're currently residing in that space. So there are different reasons for brokenness, and we'll go over that in just a minute. But to start off, I want to ask you some questions, and I want this to be interactive, so please do talk back to me. To, uh, you know, Make this a live discussion as best as we can make it on this afternoon. So I want to ask five questions, so we want to get to the root of this. The first question I want to ask you is, what is your brokenness? What is your brokenness? This can be rejection. 
This can be rejection from your parents, rejection from your siblings, rejection from your spouse, rejection from an ex, rejection from a, 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 a best friend. This can be neglect, feelings of neglect, feeling like you're uh, alone, feeling like you're tossed, feeling like you're the outcast by those people that are supposed to love you, right? This could be you feeling abandoned. This can all be reasons for your brokenness. You've been abandoned at some point in your life. Maybe a relationship didn't work out. Maybe your parents walked off and left you. Maybe you were adopted. Maybe you grew up in group homes. Um, maybe you were a foster child. Maybe you were homeless because of some circumstances that happened in your life and you felt that you were abandoned. Maybe a divorce or separation took place in your life and now you are broken. Maybe you have some altered relationships for whatever the reason and now you're living in a place of dysfunction which is causing brokenness. Maybe there's some type of violation in your life that has occurred. Uh, maybe you were abused. Maybe you were molested. Maybe you were raped. Uh, maybe something has happened. Uh, abuse of any kind. Physical abuse. Me mental abuse. Spiritual abuse may have happened in your life. Maybe you are in a place of hopelessness and, and helplessness. Uh, maybe you feel like your heart is sick. Anybody ever had a sick heart? Maybe you feel like something has happened to you in your life and it's caused you to not trust. It's caused you not to respect. It's caused you not to be in a place of happiness because of something has happened in your life and now your heart is sick. The word of God tells us that the, that the heart, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Maybe a situation happened and you were hoping for it to get better. And to this day, it has not gotten better. You're still living in that place. You're still reliving that place. Your, your mind is still taking you through the, the valleys of that. And maybe your heart is sick and your hope has been deferred. My God, maybe you're feeling inadequate and that has caused you to feel broken. Maybe you feel like life has cheated you. Maybe you feel like people have cheated you. Maybe you feel like you've done all that you can do and you know how to do, but your life is still not at a place that you desire for it to be. And that has causing your level of brokenness. So let's go back to the definition if you guys are, are, are losing me here. Okay, brokenness derives from being broken, have been broken, right? You're broke, broken, fragmented, ruptured, torn apart, right? Um, someone who is extremely discouraged, unhappy, often the person feels crushed, feels like your life is over or is about to be over. Hey, Brittany, it feels like, it seems like you're bitter at this place. So I want you to start thinking about it. We're still on question one. Hey, Sister Deborah, what is your brokenness? Could it be discord? Could it be the vision in your family? Could it be the vision on your job? What is your level of brokenness? What has happened to you? Is it unforgiveness? Is it grief? A loss of a loved one or loved ones, uh, someone you you felt that God took and you felt like the person wasn't ready to be taken. What is your level of brokenness? That's the question I'm asking you on this morning, on this afternoon. Uh, could it be a soiled and confused or an unforgiven heart? What is your level of brokenness? What is causing you to continue to go back to that place of brokenness, to go back to that place of desolation, to go back to that place of dryness? What is causing you to go back to that place? So think about that. And if you can, go ahead and write these things down. Write them down so you in your own time can unpack this and see how you need to be restored. And what I'm doing with these five questions, I'm calling this a root cause analysis because we, we got to get to the root of the thing so that we can root it out. You know, people have been preaching, people have been teaching, we've been shouting, we've been doing all of these things over our brokenness. And it's time for us to be in a healed state. It's time for us to be whole. It's time for us to be restored. Because look here, if you are not restored, your marriage is not going to be restored. If you're not healed, your marriage is not going to be in a healed place. It is impossible for a person to operate in dysfunction individually and expect for a, a, a relationship or, a, or a, an environment that they dwell in to operate function. It is absolutely impossible. And for those of you that are not married yet and you're desiring to get married, this is, this is where you are. You need to deal with this first before you go into that marriage relationship, before you have the audacity. Thank you so much, Sister Deborah. I appreciate it. Before you have the audacity to bring somebody else into that broken state and, and to affect them with your illness, my God, to affect them with your pre-existing condition, you need to be restored. Question number two. What caused you to be broken? What caused you to be broken? The first question I asked, what is your brokenness? So example of that would be a soiled or unforgiven heart. That's my brokenness. That's where I'm at right now. What caused you to be broken? Is it a breakup? 
Is it a divorce? Is it betrayal? Is it abuse? Remember we talked about the reasons I listed uh, 13, 14, I don't know, reasons of why. Is it the loss of a loved one? Is the violation? What caused you to be broken? What caused it? We need to find out what caused it, okay? And then number three, this is the, uh, the root cause analysis, you all. Number three, why are you still, still dwelling or dwindling in that broken place? Why are you still dwelling or dwindling in that broken place? Could it be you can't let it go? Could it be it hurts too bad? But what I have to say about that is if there's something that you're still holding on to and you're saying it hurts too bad, you can't let it go. You can't forgive. You can't get over it. You can't get over them because it hurts too bad. Common sense will tell me that if, if, if it's something that's attached itself to you by way of circumstances, situations, or the like, and it has caused you to be in a brokenness state, common sense tells me that you have to let it go. And once you release that thing, you will be in a restored state. Does that make sense? Are y'all tracking? So, you know, you have people that say they can't get over certain things. They can't get over certain people. They can't forgive. They can't let go. They can't do this. They can't do that. But my thing is, why hold on to the very thing that's causing your brokenness? Let's say you're in marriage. You keep going through all these dramatic experiences with your husband. Because this is my wife chat. You keep having these dramatic experiences with your husband. And it's, it's, it's a result of your brokenness. It's a result of your pre-existing condition. And you refuse to let it go. Don't you know that you're choosing to hold on to that? You're choosing to allow that to still have free reign, free reign and free course and have its way in your life because you are refusing to let it go. You're refusing to let go of the sickness. You're, you have a pre-existing condition and the doctor has given you an antidote. To take care of that pre-existing condition. And if you just take this thing and you release it. If you take this thing, it will release the pre-existing condition from you. It will cause healing and restoration to take place. But you say it hurts too bad to let it go. Number four. Who have you become as a result of your brokenness? Who have you become as a result of it? Has it made you unhappy? Has, you, has it made you a bitter person? Does it cause you to then break others? Have you heard of, I know you guys have heard of hurt people, hurt people? Well, healed people help heal other people. And if you're in a broken state and you've been in that place, you've been resting, you've been dwelling, you've been dwindling, settling, wanting out, but unsure of what you really want not realizing we could be holding yourself back. Absolutely. And not only that, Keisha, holding yourself back, but holding your purpose back and holding back all those people that God have assigned to your life because you want to dwell in that place. There's some level of uh, disoriented satisfaction that comes from you continuing to recycle your mind through that place. You go through the motions over and over and over again. Are you not tired of going through the motions? And this was why I like to talk to my single woman a lot. Because a lot of them desire to be married. And let me tell you something. If you don't get rid of your brokenness. If your brokenness is not restored. Before you get into that marriage. You're going to cause a lot of hell. Hey sis. You're going to cause a lot of issues. You're going to cause a lot of problems. And all of these things could have been avoided beforehand. Pre-existing conditions. All of these pre-existing conditions. Thank you so much for sharing this. All of these pre-existing conditions could have been cured if you have only taken the antidote. So number five question I want you to ask yourself. What do you need to begin your healing process? Hey, Dr. Tamika. 
So again, this is our root cause analysis, right? And we're talking about your brokenness. Yes, your brokenness causing brokenness in your marriage. How many of you are there? Now, I know you've been wanting the other person to change and you've been wanting God to do this, that, and the next. But we're dealing with you today. We're dealing with your level of brokenness because too many people are dealing with brokenness. I know people right now that are either in my circle or that are friends of some sort who marriages are going through because they are broken. Because they never cured the pre-existing conditions. So I'm going to go over the five questions again. And I actually write these down if you have not. The first question is, what is your brokenness? Example of that, a soil for a heart, an unforgiving heart, a bitter heart. The number two question is, what has caused you to be broken? What's, what's caused this soiled heart? What's caused this, this, this angry heart? Yes. What caused it? Breakup? Divorce? Betrayal? What has caused this? Okay, number three, why are you still, still dwelling and dwindling in this place of brokenness? And let me tell y'all, a lot of times it's your choice. It's you're choosing to stay there. Oh, Charlie, it's so hard. Let me tell you, mm, God has anointed us for hard. God has anointed us for difficulties. God had y'all hear my husband in the background. God has anointed us to be able to deal with the worst of the worst. So do not tell me that is too hard. Because I've dealt with hard. I've dealt with difficulty. I've dealt with adversity. I've dealt with opposition. I've dealt with challenges. So you cannot tell me, yes, Joe, you are equipped to deal with hard. We have to stop making these as excuses. No more excuses. Number four, who have you become as a result of your brokenness? Who have you become? You become this bitter person. You become this unhappy person. Nobody wants to be around you. Nobody wants to talk to you. Nobody wants to connect to you because you are broken. And as my niece gave an amazing analogy on yesterday when they had their, their sister chat, their girls talk on yesterday, she said it's like broken glass. Ha! Huh? And when you have broken glass all over the floor and you allow somebody to come into that room or come into your house or come into that space and touch, you know, and stand or walk on that brokenness, then they are affected. So by you being a, by you being a broken, I'm trying to contain myself and stay calm. But by you being broken, you're causing other people around you to be affected. Because you're carrying around this pre-existing condition, other people around you are being affected. Your children are being affected because you are broken. Your husband is being affected because you are broken. Your friends are being affected because you're broken. Because you left the glass on the floor and you didn't clean up the broken glass. Now everybody around you is being cut and being hurt and harmed by this glass. And when they're being cut and hurt and harmed by this glass, you know, they can get an affection. That cut can turn into an affection. And if anybody knows anything about an affection, if you don't get an antibiotic to cure that affection, you're going to end up dying. So what I want to tell you wives on this morning, you wives to be, if you don't get an antibiotic to cure that brokenness, you're going to end up getting affected and you're going to die. If that infection does not get cured, you're going to end up dying. Your marriage is going to end up dying. And I'm talking about figuratively and literally. Death will take place in your life. My God. So the next question is, what do you need to begin your healing process? What do you need to begin your healing process? Let me tell you something. Your husband is not going to cure you. He is not your healer. 
He is not your redeemer. So those of you that are looking to get married and you feel like when you do get married, you're going to be whole, you're going to be complete, and he's just going to be your savior, you're sadly mistaken because the only person that can stand in that space for you to that degree is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're looking for somebody to be your savior, you are truly mistaken, sister. The only person that's going to be able to heal you, to cure you of all of your sicknesses and of all of your diseases, figuratively speaking, and literally, and literally speaking, is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do not, I forbid you to take any, to allow, to allow anyone to take your hand in marriage and you know that you are still broken. Yes, Trump won't do it. Man won't do it. Nobody can do it. Nobody can do it. Barack Obama can't do it. I forbid you to get into a relationship right now. If you're single, I forbid you. Yes, I forbid you to get into a relationship with anybody and you are still broken. Clean up the glass. Get an antibiotic for the infection. It's not fair for you to go in any level of relationship when you know that you are still dealing with all of that brokenness. It's unfair to the people that are around you. It's unfair to them. And it's unfair for you to attempt to cover it up and to pretend that you're healed and pretend that you're whole just to get what you want. So then at that point, you can act out in that environment. It's unfair to the people that are around you. So I admonish you on to this afternoon to take these five questions, to go back and look at that definition, to see, is this where I am? Am I fragmented? Am I ruptured? Yes. Get it. So yes. Am I ruptured? Am I extremely discouraged and, and unhappy? Am I bitter? Stop worrying about the other person. Stop being concerned about what they're not doing and begin to look at your own level of unbrokenness or brokenness, brokenness. I want to tell you five things that occur as a result of brokenness. And then I want to tell you what you need to do to get healed, to get whole. Hey, Kashanda, to get healed and get whole. And it's a simple process. Let me tell you, God is so simple. The word of God was written so that a child can understand. But the reason why we're not adhering to the word of God is because we want to do things in our own level of righteousness. We want to we want to do what we want to do when we want to do it. We don't want to do as Luke 9 and 23 tells us to deny ourselves to pick up our cross every single day and follow Jesus. We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. We do that when it's convenient for us. And because we're not doing that, we're still broken. We're still, still dealing with all these issues and problems that we should have been cured from. If you'd only taken the medication, if, if you had only taken the antibiotic, you would have been cured for it by now. How many of you in the natural received some type of medication because you were sick and because you felt like you didn't feel like taking the medication because you don't like medicine, you stopped taking the medication. So instead of you getting better, you were getting bitter. Instead of you getting healed, you were, instead of you getting healed, you were getting more sick. That's the same thing with this. That's the same thing with this. So five things that's going to occur. So let me tell you something. If you don't, if you don't take the medication, <laughs> if you don't take the antibiotic, if you don't clean up the glass, if you don't do all of that, this is, a, this is what's going to continue to happen as a result of it. Bitterness. Bitterness in your behavior. Brokenness causes bitterness in your behavior, your actions, your attitude, your mood. Right? Number two, betrayal. Betrayal causes you to feel betrayed or even try to betray others because you are broken. You're going to feel betrayed. Oh, they hurt me. Oh, this happened. That happened. Get over it. I'm not making light of your situation because I've been in some very traumatic situations. So I tell you right now, I'm not making light of it. But what I am telling you is that it's time to clean up the glass. I should, should have. That's why I should have named my school. It's time to clean up the glass. I love it. Three, bullied. Brokenness causes you to feel bullied. Why? Because you're forced into feeling the way you feel as a result to something or someone else. Isn't that what a bully does? A bully makes you do things, make you say things, makes you feel a certain kind of way. So your brokenness causes you to feel bullied. It causes you to be forced in a feeling of discontentment, feel in a feeling of deception because of, 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 of what somebody else did or what somebody else said or something else that has happened. Number four, it causes you to be barren. 
Brokenness causes barrenness. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it together, y'all. And barrenness is you're unable to produce. I know we refer defer to barrenness as it relates to children and, and giving birth. Yes, that's true. But this is even giving birth in the spiritual. So brokenness causes you to become barren, spiritually barren, unable to produce, incapable of producing. You, you become sterile. Your hopes, your dreams, your desires, your purpose become sterile. You're no longer operating fertility because you are broken. And the last one, it causes you to be bewildered. It causes you to be perplexed. It causes you to be confused about who you are, what you are. It causes confusion, causes chaos. And guess what? It causes this inwardly and then outwardly. You ever known someone that had an internal disease and if they didn't get the necessary help and medication, then that disease will begin to show outwardly? My God. Hey there. Hey girl. Is that Bonnie? That disease begin to show outwardly. Outwardly, I think that's, is that funny? I don't know. So if you don't get the inside taken care of, you may look good on the outside right now, but eventually, if you don't get the inside taken care of, the outside will begin to reflect that. So we're dealing with the, in, the inside on today. And I'm going to leave you with this. Because there is some good news. You don't have to stay in that place of brokenness. You don't have to stay in that place of barrenness. You don't have to stay in that place of bitterness. You don't have to stay in that place where you're bullied. You don't have to stay in that place of bewilderment. You can come out of that because God never called you to be broken. God never called you to be broken. He never desired for us to be in that state. He had things happen in our life and we understand that situations and circumstances come and sometimes it gets us into a broken state, but he never, he never intended for us to stay there. Us staying there is our choice. It's not even the enemy that is causing us to stay there. It's not even the other person, that, whoever may have caused the affliction, that's causing us to stay there. It's our level of decision making. So the first order of business, you guys should already know it's coming. The first order of business is that your mind needs to be healed. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind. A changed mind, let's read some scriptures here. A changed mind causes a changed heart. But an unchanged mind leaves an unchanged heart. You see how simple that is? A changed mind causes a changed heart. But an unchanged mind causes an unchanged heart. Romans 12 and 2, one of our foundation scriptures. Be not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to read it from Joyce Meyer's book. Yes, yes, God. Do not be conformed to this world, mean this age, this, this, this particular time frame. Don't be fashioned after and adopted to its external superficial, superficial customs, but be ye transformed, be changed, be changed, be changed by the entire, the whole, all-inclusive renewing of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove yourself for yourself what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even in the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. Even in the thing, hey, Regina, even in the thing, even in the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. So the first order of business, you have to renew your mind. Renewing of your mind is healing of your mind. It's healing of your mind and renewing is with I-N-G. It's a constant renewing of your mind. This is the everyday thing. Just like Luke 9 and 23 said, we have to pick up our cross every single day. A part of that, picking up your cross is renewing your mind. Number two. Number two, you have to heal your heart. Mm. You have to heal your heart. My God. Allow God to heal your heart. Let me tell you, have you ever heard of somebody dying of a broken heart? Oh my God, that's so real. Let me get to the scripture, you guys. That's so real. You don't want to die of a broken heart because you feel like somebody betrayed you so very bad and you just don't want to let it go. That's going to affect your relationships, girls, ladies and gents. And my, I have some gents on here. That's going to affect your relationship. 
Yeah, that's going to affect affect your job relationships, the job you go to every single day. That's going to affect your business if you're a business owner, an entrepreneur. That's going to affect relationships with your children. That's going to affect relationships with those in your communities, those in your churches. And most of all, my wives, that's going to affect your relationship with your husband. A broken heart. Hey, see, see you around. That's my husband. Hey, honey. That's going to affect your relationships. A broken heart. So we have to get rid of the broken heart. Psalms 147 and 3 tells us. And nobody has experienced a broken heart as much as Jesus has experienced it. So we have no excuses because he's our ultimate example. He's our, And this is near and dear to me. It's heavy on me because... He is the ultimate example and I, and, I, and I see so many people struggling with getting over a broken heart. When Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. He was wounded for us so that we may operate in a healed state. And when we talk about that, we're not just talking about physical healing, you guys. We're not just talking about healing from sickness and diseases. We're talking about an internal healing. God is an internal healing. He is our Jehovah Rapha. He is an internal healing. He, he heals our minds. He heals our broken heart. Psalms 147 and 3 says, He heals the broken heart and binds up the wounds. Means curing their pains and their sorrows. God cures your pains and sorrows. Honey, give me some hearts. So you can't tell me. <laughs> you can't tell me that God can't heal you. Healing takes place from the inside out. You see so many people trying to dress up healing. You, have, you see so many people trying to, you know, look like they heal. They're trying to look healed. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're not healed from the inside, you're not going to be healed on the outside. I can tell you that right now. It's just a show. It's just a facade. It, it's, it's a, it eventually will dwindle down and dwindle away. Number three, allow your brokenness to cause you to repent. Jesus allows your brokenness to cause you to repent. Repent of what, Trail? Repent of that unforgiveness that you're still holding on to. Repent of that sorrow, sorrowness that you're still holding on to. Repent of being bitter toward whoever may have caused the affliction. Because there's a root cause to it. Something happened and now you're still holding on to it. And now it's affecting your relationships and it's affecting your marriage. And now... You're at odds with even yourself. 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. I hope you guys are writing these scriptures down. If somebody can write these, um, put these scriptures in there for individuals. Jill, I know you did Romans 12 and 2, 12, 1 and 2. Another one for healing the mind is Philippians um, 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Healing of your heart. If you guys need your heart to be cured, one, Psalms 147 and 3. Once, 147 and 3. And then allow your brokenness to cause you to repent. That's what we're on right now. Because y'all didn't know that's a part of it. That's a part of that. That's a part of you picking up your cross. That's a part of you bearing good fruit. John 15 and 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you should bear good fruit. You may have not have been producing great fruit because you're holding on to brokenness. So if you're looking at your marriage being severed, you're looking at your marriage being being in a broken place, it's because perhaps you're broken. Just perhaps. Maybe it's time to look at the man in the mirror and stop looking at other people and what they've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your dad left you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that relationship didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you are. You felt neglected and you felt like someone hurt you and they caused all this pain. They called, okay, you know what? You know what? At this time of your life, you have to let it go. Because it's going to continue to cause a ripple effect. You got to take the antibiotic. 2 Corinthians 7, 8 and 9. Chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 8 and 9. And it reads, For even though I did grieve you with my letter, I do not regret it now, though I did regret it, for I see that only that letter did pain to you, though only for a little while. Yet I am glad now, 
not because you were pained, this is Paul talking, but because you were pained into repentance. Oh, and so turn back to God. Cause let me say something. Some of you have betrayed God because of your brokenness. You feel like because God didn't take the pain away, because God didn't move or is not moving fast enough for you, because God is not healing your marriage, because God is not changing your husband, because God is not making the situation better right now, right here and right now. Some of you, some of you need to repent to God because you feel like God has caused the pain and he refused to give you any relief. But I'm here to tell you that God wants to heal your heart. And Paul just told us, allow your pain to cause you to go into a place of repentance. Allow your pain to have you turn back to God. Some of you have turned away from God, but allow the pain to turn you back to God. That's the trick of the enemy. He wants your pain to turn you away from God too, to disannihilate God, to, to put him in this place of he, he's no longer a priority in your life. He's no longer a, a substance or sustainable person in your life. But the devil is a liar. Allow your pain to cause you to repent and to go back to God. For you felt a grief. Such as God, such as God meant you to feel. You're going to feel grief. You're going to feel pain. So that in nothing you might suffer loss through us or harm for what we did. For godly grief and the pain God is permitted to direct, produce a repentance that leads and contributes to salvation and deliverance brings you deliverance from evil. And it never brings regret, but worldly grief, the hopeless sorrow that is characteristic of a pagan world is deadly, breeding and ending in death. And you walking in brokenness and unforgiveness and hatred and pain, that's of the world. That's the world's way of doing things. That's not our way. So I'm telling you today to get rid of it and, it, and allow it to cause you to come to a place of repentance. Number four, I want to exact, um, expound more on letting it go and forgiveness. Figuratively and literally, literally, let it go because it's killing you. That's what I meant to say. It is killing you figuratively and literally. A few scriptures for that is Mark 11 and 25, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, and Ephesians 4 and 32. Why do I have to forgive? Because you not forgiving is like drinking poison in wanting the other person to die as a result of it and earlier i said you know people say it's too hard it, it hurts too bad the pain is too i can't endure the pain so that tells me wisdom tells me pain pay attention i'm there come on girl wisdom tells me if it hurts too bad that thing that's hurting too bad in order for you to get relief from it you have to let it go in order for you to be healed from it you have to let it go you can't hold on to it it's killing you it's killing you. Let it go. And then number five, restoration. God is a restorer and God is a God of reconciliation. He wants us to be reconciled back to him. And we can't do that in a broken state. We can't do that in continuous brokenness. So once we're reconciled back to God, we can then be reconciled back to, to our family members. We can then be, then be reconciled back to our relationships with our husbands. Then re reconciliation in other areas will take place. So the forgiveness scriptures is Mark 11 and 25, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, and Ephesians 4 and 32. And the scripture for reconciliation and restoration is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses really 11 through 21. Um, but if you were to read just 18 through 21, that would still give you the gist of what you need to um, look at or what you need to go through the restoration process and I also want to give you Deuteronomy 33 through 13 Deuteronomy 33 through 13 and it talks about restoration and reconciliation and all that great stuff so that's the good news for you guys on today and I'm wrapping up here but I want you guys to really take heed to what we talked about on today and I know, I don't know if you guys thought, oh, wife chat, I'm going to talk about how you can be this amazing and great and wonderful wife. It, it, I am telling you that. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. But it starts with you. Because your relationships will only be as good as you. And I said in another one of my scopes, the failure um, or the brokenness of your marriage has a lot to do with you because you are a direct contributor. Well, child, no, my husband is my husband that my husband is. I get it. I get it. 
but you are too a direct contributor. And if I were to go back to my foundation scripture of what I base my wife chats and wives who win segments on, 1 Peter 3, in verse 1, it talks about that your husband is not going to be won over by your conversation and your discussion, your nagging, your complaining and telling him what he needs to do, what he doesn't need to do, how he needs to change and how he needs to do better and be better. But, 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 he'll be won over by the conduct and the character of you. So, if you want your marriage to be better, then you be better. You become better. So that's what I leave with you on today. Um, on Wednesdays, I am on 5 a.m. My Wives Who Win segment. And I talk about the power of a praying wife. The power of a, a praying wife. So make sure that you are on on 5 a.m. And for all my first time viewers, thank you so much for watching this afternoon. I pray and I hope that you were blessed by it. And if you missed my introduction in the beginning, I'm Cheryl Ravenel. I'm one of the founders of Detour Movement. And we are all about helping women to renew their minds so that they can transform their entire life. Transform their marriage, their mission, their ministry, their money. Uh, anything as it relates to your life being transformed, that's what we teach and that's what we help women to do. To get to that place of restoration, to get to that place of transformation. Hey Camille, is that Camille um, here in Charleston? I think you've been on before, but welcome Camille, welcome um, uh, Dr. Tamika, I believe that was on earlier. Kenyatta was your first time, welcome, I appreciate you. Camry, hey, how are you Cameron? Cameron, yes, so I appreciate you all for just joining and chiming on with me. Thank you for following the movement, I appreciate it so very much. Um, my heart is for wives. My heart uh, is for women in general, but especially for wives because I'm a young wife and I see a lot of young wife from Michigan. Oh, hey, girl from Michigan. Is it cold out there yet? A lot of young wives going through and suffering through their marriages and God never intended us for us to go, go through that. I, no marriage is not going to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be hell either. You know, and I know as a wife that the, the betterment and, and, and the um, success and the blessing of your marriage you have a direct role to play in that and you are a direct contributor to that. So my stance is, is, is in helping women, wives to be better, right? So that their marriages can be better, to operate in a, pl in a, in a place where they are restored, where they are, their minds are renewed, where they are a place of reconciliation with God so that they can produce better in their marriage. And yes, so I asked that question number five, like what is it going to take for you? What is it going to take for your next step? And preparing for my God. Yes. And in the meantime, Cameron, take in all of this information. Get rid of your ugly. You have to go back. I don't know if you're on my Facebook page, but I talked about getting rid of your ugly on last week. And and go through that place where you're no longer broken. And I'm not saying you're once you once you get in the marriage, you're just gonna be perfect and, and you're gonna be walking on this level of I've arrived and I don't need any more growth. No, but 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 You'll be in a place where you have grown and you've matured mentally, physically, spiritually, and the like. And you'll be continuing to, you'll continue to grow individually so that you can continue to, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, oh, okay. You can implement those things into your marriage. Okay, I got you. You can continue, you can implement those um, things into your marriage. Those good behaviors, right? So Proverbs 31 Day Challenge is coming up, you guys. And the best way to get over your brokenness, Proverbs31DayChallenge.com, okay? The best way to get over your brokenness, to, uh, to allow yourself to go to, through transformation, deliverance, and healing, and all of that great stuff, is to join our Proverbs 31 Day Challenge. That's starting, and if you want to be a part of that challenge, it's absolutely free to join. You can go to Proverbs31DayChallenge.com. Proverbs31daychallenge.com. It is absolutely free. It's not only a game changer, it's a life changer. So if you are still in a place where you need, desperately need transformation to take place in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships with other people, you need to be a part of this challenge. It will take you through 31 days of looking into you. Looking into you. All of the things that we talked about on the scope on today. This Proverbs 31 day challenge will allow you to do just that. The basic level of this challenge is free. But if you want to do the full flesh challenge. 
and get the book. It will cost you a very small investment of what? Is it $7.99? How much is it, Joe, for the book, for the electronic version? It's like under 10 bucks. And if you've been in this place of brokenness for some time now, I'm going to encourage you, strongly encourage you to get the book because you'll gain the most value. We'll give you a roadmap of what the 31 days will look like, what we're going to go over every single day. For 31 days, you're going to get a um, email from us every single day. We're going to go through the scriptures. We're going if you're if you have the full access, you're going to get reflections every single day so that you can then reflect back on your own life and where you are. So we have a few options. So I admonish you to go to Proverbs31DayChallenge.com. Check out the different options that we have. They're all very affordable. And let me tell you, you transform it to be better for your marriage, to be better for your, your relationships, your children, and all of that great stuff. That's priceless. I think Joe's $7.99 and 20, 20 bucks or something for the workbook. That is priceless. It's priceless. Proverbs31DayChallenge.com. Thank you, Greater Grace. I appreciate you. Please, if you're ready, if you're ready, what was question number five? What do you need to begin your healing process? And for some of you, many of you, this is it. The Proverbs 31 Day Challenge. We've done this challenge several times. We have so many testimonials of people that joined this challenge. Hundreds of, when we first did this challenge, we had what, Joe? I don't know, hundreds of women that joined us on this challenge. We have a page as well, the Proverbs 31 Day Challenge. We have about 500 women that's a part of that page. And testimonial after testimonial after testimonial. But it's going to take you doing the work. So just like, why are you still dwelling or dwindling there? That question number three, many of you because it's a choice and because you refuse to do the work. So with this, you're going to have to do the work. I'm also led to pray that future good or being husband. Yes. Yes. Okay. And always be led by the spirit, Camille. Always be led by the spirit of God and he will not lead you wrong. So... You got to do the work, guys. So I hope you all be joining me. Who's committed Who's committed to their transformation? Let's just get a roll call here. You can put up a one. If you're committed to your transformation and you say, you know what, y'all, I'm going to invest that $10 or $20, whatever access I decide to get. I'm going to invest that because I know that I'm broken. I know that there's some level of brokenness. I know that there's some glass that's still shattered on my floor and I need to clean up that glass. I know that I've been affected right? I know I've been infected. I know I've been affected by some things and I know I need to take the antibiotic. And I know that this Proverbs 31 day challenge is my antibiotic. Yes, 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 ladies. Yes. The Proverbs 31 day challenge, that is my antibiotic. So go sign up, you guys. Proverbs 31 day challenge.com to look at it. And it will take you, I believe it'll take you to the shopping cart to get the book. But our website is detourmovement.org. D2Moment.org. You can go there. You're so welcome. It's in, Let me tell you. Do I have a copy of the book? Well, it's going to be the electronic version. So it's not going to be the actual. I don't Joe, did we give them the option to get the book if they wanted to? Or just we're just going to do the electronic version? I have all versions. I have Kindle. I have electronic. I have um, also the book as well. But it, it will be one of the best decisions that you're going to make in your life. If you have any questions, absolutely. You can inbox us. And let me tell you, I do this challenge often by myself. Me and Joe do it together. Me and the community do it. And every single time, there is a different outcome. Electronic only, okay. Every single time, there is a different outcome. Every single time, I get better. Okay. Every single time, I get better. And guess what? Because I get better, my marriage is better. My family is better. The relationships around me get better. You see how that works? So you're carrying the antidote. You're carrying the antidote. You're carrying the antibiotic for your brokenness. So, all right, ladies, I thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for my replay viewers for looking. Share, 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 share. If you know somebody needs to hear this message, please share with them. Please share with them. This is a worldwide message. And like I said earlier on the scope, everybody is in a different form of ministry. But God has called us all to some level of ministry. And how we deliver that ministry is different ways. We are so blessed to have outlets like social media that will allow us to come on to be able to share with people the word of God, the truth of God. So please don't hold on to this message and don't feel like it's so sacred you can't let it go. Share with other people you know need to hear it. 
need to be restored, need to be healed, need to get rid of that brokenness. You've seen what it has done to them. You've seen how it has affected their attitudes. You've seen how it has affected their relationships. You've seen how it has affected their marriage. And you want to offer some type of aid, some type of support. That's like seeing somebody that needs support or need, you know, they're in danger. Thank you so much, Great Grace. They're in danger and you have the ability to help them, but you refuse to extend any level of support to them. You don't want to do that. Let's not be that type of person. We want to extend support. We want to extend um, assistance to other people. And for many people in today, this message will be just that for them. So I'm going to go off, you guys, only for... No, 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 no. This is for marriage, for single, for divorce, um, for whatever. No, ma'am. This is for all women that want to experience transformation. So if you want to experience transformation in your life, if you want to become more disciplined in the things of God and the things in your, your natural life, this is for you. If you want a better understanding of what a Proverbs 31 woman is, because I know I heard that term all the time and I had no idea what it meant. This is for you. And this will help you to uncover and unpack brokenness in your life so that you can go then on to a restored place, a transformed place. So this is for all, all women that want to experience transformation. Monday nights, I'll be remiss if I didn't tell you on Monday nights, we are in our Kingdom Women's School. So that's on my, if you're on Facebook, that's on my personal Facebook page at Trail Ravenel, T-R-E-A-L, Ravenel, R-A-V-E-N-E-L. Join me for our Kingdom Women's School. We're um, teaching discipleship on Mondays, every Monday at 8 p.m. Hey there, Sandra Watson. Hey girl, we're getting off now. So please go back and listen to the replay. And then of course on, fr on Wednesdays at 5 a.m., my Wives Who Win series, and I talk about uh, the power of a praying wife on Wednesdays, and we go over different topics. On so last week, last Wednesday, we talked about his sexuality, praying for your husband's sexuality. Ooh, it was juicy, you guys. If you missed it, if it's still on Periscope, you can go back and listen to it. If not, you just have to catch me on Wednesday at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope you all have a beautiful and blessed day. Me and my husband have a wedding to go to at 3 o'clock. So we're going to um, start getting ready for that and, and just enjoy our day. Enjoy your day. And for my wives that are on here, I have a women's ministry. How can I make them beneficial? We are for... Yes! Can you email me? Yes, can you email me? Jill and Trail at DetourMovement.com. Bless the Lord. J I L L A N D T R E A L at Gmail at DetourMovement.com. Can somebody type that for her? Jill and Trail at DetourMovement.com. Please do. Yes, we would love for them to join. We would love for them to join. This will be one of the best decisions that they can make for their own life. It's all about transformation. Yes, God has called us to be community leaders, community builders, but we can't operate in that space. Honey, are you knocking on the door? <laughs> you can't operate in that space unless we are transformed. You are so welcome. I love you all so very much. I'm going to go ahead and get off, and I hope you all have a beautiful and blessed weekend. Please write the email. Jill and, I can't write it on my end. Can I write it? I don't think I can write. Jill and Trail at DetourMovement.com. Hmm. Yeah, I can. Oh, this is a new button. Give me yours, um, and then I will email you. How about that? Can you write type yours in here, and then I can screenshot it and email you. Yeah, he's intentional. Never failing. Okay. Good. Thank you so much, Great Grace. I appreciate it. Yep. It's Ann, uh, A N D. Karen. Okay. I got you. So I'm going to go back and look at it. Jill and Trail, J A J I L L A N D T R E A L at Detour Movement. D E T O U R Movement. M O V E M E N T dot com. But I got yours. I'm going to go back and screenshot it and then I'll shoot you an email as soon as I get off here. All right, you guys, I got to go. I love you all so very much. And I hope to see you Monday, 8 p.m. for Kingdom Women's School on my personal page. See you all. Bye.